Welcome to From the Nightmares of Hype Denny and this is Commission 14 of Feral Dolls. So for this project I was commissioned to recreate this painting in a doll form. My client just provided this reference photo. At first I had no idea who this character is and where this picture comes from. Until I began editing this video I zoomed in and saw the watermark. So to give credit I linked the artist's social media details under this video description. But anyways, for this project me and my client chose Monster High School's rule Draculaura. I began the usual preparation process by warming up her head with a hair dryer and then I disconnected it from her body. I cut out her hair, removed all the glue junk with tweezers. Then I removed her factory paint with pure acid zone. As I am going to give her blonde hair, I painted her head skull to match with her hair. Then I began rerouting her hair with this lovely alpaca hair. Its natural color matched perfectly with the reference photo, so I didn't waste my time dyeing it. Also, it took me, I think, two or three days to finish rerouting. And trust me, I wasn't taking very long breaks in between. I honestly admire and envy people that are able to finish rerouting in a few hours. But I feel like when you use alpaca, it takes a bit longer compared to synthetic hair. Also, originally the hair piping of this doll was in between the head sculpt, but I needed to change it to the side, just like in the reference photo. And as usual, in order not to have any bold pouches, I reused the same hair plug two times and I folded one hair strand to the right and the other one to the left. Then I prepared her hair and began the repainting. As usual, I began with really soft tones, then I slowly built up the color. I blushed to distinguish the placement of her eyebrows, then I drew the shape of her eyes. Then I blushed the inner corners as well as the upper and lower eyelids. Then I shaped her eyebrows with a needable eraser. And I also blushed her lips with pink pastels. Then I darkened the lines of her eyes. Then off camera I painted the scleras, this time using watercolor pencils by taking the pigment with a wet brush. Which I no longer do this method, I just paint them with acrylics instead. And I also drew her tear duct and the edge of her iris. And I added some yellow pigment inside the iris with pencils and pastels. Forgot to tell you that my client also asked me to give her heterochromia, so I drew her right eye with blue pencils. I also tried my best to mimic her facial expression. It's very gentle and innocent. And it was quite hard for me to give her thin eyebrows since I got so used to painting thicker ones. Off camera I blushed the spots of her pupils and I also darkened her upper eyelids. And I also darkened her pupils and added some highlights underneath them. Then I began drawing her eyelashes. And these were probably the finest eyelashes that I've ever painted. I mean, I would constantly sharpen the pencils with a razor blade to make sure that they end up looking as fine as possible. I also drew her eyebrow hair. And I also began drawing the texture on her lips. In the end, I also added her lip shadows. And back then I wasn't really adding any catch lights to their eyes since I would just mimic them with lighting while taking their pictures. After I finished her face up I removed all her hair protection then I began detangling her hair. 
I sprayed her hair with some water and then I used my hair iron to make it flat. I also sanded and blushed her body. I do very gentle body blushing, I don't like when it looks like raw meat. <laughs> By the way, this is an operetta body. The skin tone is a bit different, but I tried my best to match it. I also went for fabric shopping, but before buying the fabrics, I went to the toy sections of some of these new supermarkets. I was mostly looking to find some rainbow high dolls, but they didn't have any, it was just some Barbies and a little surprise dolls. I found this Barbie extra doll and to be honest it didn't look as awful. The presentation of the box was very nice and the outfit was also in a very good quality. However, I don't really like Millie mold nor the modern Barbie in general, like I strongly prefer the previous generation girl mold. Mm, very good. I also found a bunch of enchantables for like very affordable prices, I mean 25,100 AMD, which is approximately 62 US dollars. Очень, очень affordable. I also found this absolutely beautiful sun damaged G2 Draculaura. I mean as we know G2 being the absolute best era of Monster High. Girlfriend, stop! Get back in the car! For 35,200 AMD which is approximately 87 US dollars. Especially Shonibo prices are very, very reasonable. And she also came with a dirt spot on her nose, which considering what a deal this was, I thought that the sun damage and the dirt spot would be sold separately, but they were actually included with the doll, so that was pleasantly surprising. But anyhow, after finding those amazing deals, I bought the fabrics and I asked this lady if I could film their hands. Also, funny thing that happened when I asked them if I could film their hands, they like immediately looked at the fingers to see whether their manicure is in good condition or not. And I was like, go. Yeah. 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 For a second, I lost it, but I didn't laugh, of course, because that would be disrespectful and I didn't want them to have the wrong idea. Okay, and after that, I came back home. Okay, so after that, I burned the house down. Then I began making her outfit. I cut out the bodice pieces and I fray checked their edges. Also, one of my Patreons commented back then and told me that I should definitely fray check fabric edges instead of burning them, so this is basically when I started using fray check. And it changed my work ethic a lot, so thank you so much for that. But anyways, I did the stitch on the bodice to have a fold there where the pleats will be attached to. Then I cut out the allowance to make it thinner. And then I fray checked it. I also drew the lines on her back bodice pieces where I'm going to stitch the folds. Then I used my hair iron to iron them down. By the way, I sanitize it every time I use it on doll hair, so don't worry. Then I drew and stitched over those lines to make the pleats. Then I added the super glue and did the pleats, and I also ironed them with my hair iron. Obviously, this video is from 2022, and back then, some of my sewing techniques were very questionable, so, so nowadays I would never do the pleats this way. Then I prepared these pieces to attach the pleats to them. I also added another layer to the bodice piece, cause they were way too thin. Then I temporarily stitched them together, cause I still had to stitch these pieces to finish the bodice. Then I connected those pleats to the bodice pieces by hand stitching. Then I cut out all the axis pieces. Then I stitched the fold on the back bodice pieces and then I cut out the axis. Then I hand stitched all these pieces together. Now she's got some bishop puffy sleeves, so I used this sleeve pattern and I cut it out into straps. Then I placed that on the sheet of paper and I left an inch distance in between them and I made the bishop sleeve pattern. Then I 
Then I cut it out on fabric, marked the dots and stitched the pleats. And yeah, I stitched them with pleats cause doing a basting stitch was not an option. For some reason it looked very ugly. Then I hand stitched the sleeves to her bodice. And this is how the bodice looked. To finish it up, I still needed to stitch the edges together. And if you might be wondering, why don't you just use your sewing machine to stitch this? Well, it's way too small and it gets sucked inside the handle of my sewing machine. And after finishing the right edge, this is how it looked. Looks kind of cute, isn't it? Then I finished the left side and flipped it inside out, or right side out, I don't know. Then I began making her skirt. I cut out a circle and I divided it in four parts. Then I divided those parts in four again, I believe. These are all the pieces. There were in total like 16 pieces. I fray checked each of their edges. Then I used the regular paper glue to keep them attached to each other, while I sew them with my sewing machine. Also, I thought that you might like to hear some sewing machine noises while I'm stitching, so you're welcome. And after attaching these pieces together, I stitched this lace to the edge of the skirt to make it more vintage looking. Then I hand stitched the bodice to the skirt and this is how it looked. I also used some of that leftover pleats that I made for her bodice to stitch to her sleeves. And I also stitched some lace over those pleats. Then I also stitched some beads to the lace on her skirt and sleeves, gosh, I said stitched million times already. Also, you need to have some of these special needles for beads, as you can see the head is way narrow compared to the regular ones. I also stitched some lace to the bodice, however dyeing it was a bad idea cause you never know how red dye might work, right? So I ended up stitching it undyed just white and it still looked cute though. I also stitched beads over them and then I attached these roses that I handmade which I will show you just in a minute. Now in the reference photo she also has this belt with roses on so I decided to make the belt with those roses embroidered on it. I drew the size, then I did some marking to keep the distance and placement. Then I used some embroidery thread and embroidered the roses first. And as you can notice I used this special thread that has a gradient in it so that I won't only have one single color on my roses. This might seem too complicated, but it isn't really. I will add at the top right side of the screen the videos that showcase the process more detailed and on a bigger scale so that you can learn it. This was my first time doing embroidery by the way and I absolutely loved it. I will definitely do more in the future.
and after I was done doing the roses, I began embroidering the leaves. Then I also filled in between those roses pink and I also did some more yellowish leaves. And it's so weird how messy it looks from the back. Now I'm not sure to be honest, I think this took me 3 days to finish. Not sure why but back then I also decided to include this very poor quality footage of me picking apples in the garden. I feel like I was planning on doing a massive evil queen on a bunch of people that crossed me in the past. 50 and fabulous. <laughs> well, that was random. And while their bodies were decaying while I was slaying, I'm getting buried next to my husband and I want to put lipstick on. I came back home and hang out with my cats a little bit. But anyways, after I was done with this embroidery, I removed the hoops and then I cut it out, I stitched it to hide the messy back part and then I stitched this white lace to its edges to make it extra cute. Now in the reference photo, she's got some flowers in her hands. I'm not sure what are those, but since I already embroidered roses on her belt, so I decided to make roses. I took a toothpick and a ribbon, then I began folding the ribbon over it while gluing it with a super glue. Also, the super glue wasn't enough to hold the ribbon in place, so I kept them in place with some needles. This was so time consuming and exhausting to do, I can't even remember how many days it took me to finish. I also stitched them for extra hold. And after using so much super glue, my fingers were dead. <laughs> Please wear some glass while you do this, cause you don't want to get cancer while you make those flowers. To make the pedestals, I took some wire, then I rolled some thread over it. Then I glued the heads to the pedestals. And I also glued those beads to the ends of it for some extra detail or something. And this is how the bouquet looked. Now, in this other reference photo, she looks bare feet, but I figured out that I can make some cute slippers for her, so I did some embroidery again. Then I cut them out, attached some lace, and attached those to the shoes that I made out of four blood. Then I painted those shoes and I glossed them with camera. I also stitched beads to the lace and the shoes were done. I connected her head to her body and then I dressed her up. This is how the final dress and belt looked like and I think it looked very vintage and cottagecore inspired. But yeah, that's the end of the video guys. I hope that you enjoyed watching this and I hope that you liked the end result as well. Also shout out to my amazing Patreons that make these videos possible and if you would like to support the channel and become a Patreon yourself, the link is under this video description. And once again thank you so much for watching and now enjoy the end result pictures and I will see you in the next video. Bye.